Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. Today I wanted to talk about kind of considering if you know what your budget style is. Because budgeting, there's no one way to do it. Everybody is different in the way they like to do things, whether they're very detailed or less detailed, um, how much time they want to spend tracking, how much thought they want to put into what, where their money's going and how, what they're spending money on or how controlled or how, how impulsive they want to be um, with their spending. But the, the main thing is, is that budgeting is so important in general um, to our finances and even just to feeling good about the way things are going. When, when you don't know where your money's going, it can kind of make you have this uneasy feeling because you might feel like, I'm making this decent amount of money and at the end of the day, I don't know where it is all gone and I feel like I should have more than I do. Um, you know, by budgeting, it just makes you have a better feeling of where your money's going and what you can do to make better use of it. And some people have this idea that budgeting is only needed if you're struggling or if you're on your you're on a really low income but that's so not true i mean no matter what your income level is it never feels good to not know what's happening with the money that you make so having a budget is really just a plan to decide with the money that's coming in where it's going and saying that something's not in your budget or saying you are on a budget is not a bad thing even though many people seem to interpret it that way being on a budget is being smart and it's it's making sure that you're making the most of the money that you have and you know when we create a budget it really kind of gives us the opportunity to look at what we have and where our money's going and seeing if maybe we could be using that money in ways that's more of a value to us and it really kind of gives you a little bit of a feeling of control um, in making sure that you are doing the best that you can with what you have available but one thing we sometimes need to consider is if, if the budget style we're using works for us because sometimes we might start to budget and then just not stick to it. It might be that you feel like you're never able to come in on budget, or maybe the process of tracking your spending is just too time consuming and it's not something that you really wanna be involved in. Because like I said, everyone is different in how they like to manage their money. But the most important thing is regardless of how detailed you wanna get, having a budget, some form of a budget and keeping it maintained in some way will be Um, very helpful to you in making sure you know where your money's going and that you're getting the most value of your money for the things that you enjoy most in your life. And there are so many different ways to create a budget. So today I'm just going to share some of the different methods that maybe you might want to try if you feel like your current budget system isn't working for you or if you're just not able to stick to it. You can also even pull different aspects out of different budget types and create something that works for you. There's no um, like way that you have to budget. It's really just about having some type of plan and managing your money to the best um, to your best ability to make sure that you feel comfortable with how you're managing it. So one type of budgeting is called zero-based budgeting. So with zero-based budgeting. Basically, you start at zero. That's why it's called zero-based budgeting. You wouldn't just take your prior year budget and roll it over and like adjust some expenses, adjust your income, things like that. To do a true zero-based budget, you literally start from scratch. So every single line item gets added um, one at a time until you build your entire budget. So the reason that some people like to do it this way is because it really... Um, kind of forces you to consider each line item that you're adding to your budget to make sure that that money that you're spending is still something that you really do want it to be included in your budget. So obviously there's going to be certain things that you have to include in your budget, like your mortgage or your car payment um, or things like that. But you know, maybe when you're putting in that like Netflix subscription or maybe some magazine subscription, or I don't know if that many people get magazines anymore but whatever um whatever other like subscriptions or expenses you have in your budget as you're adding them in 
you know, you might kind of take a look at it and say, well, you know, I don't really use that anymore. Maybe I should call and cancel that service. Or maybe we can get like a lower, um, a lower option, like a, a lower cost option because we don't use it as much as we used to. So it really kind of forces you to take a look at each item and decide whether those things are still important to you and if you still wanna keep them in your budget. One of the disadvantages of this method though is that you're basically kind of recreating the wheel. So if you already have a good budget in place and you do take your time to kind of thoroughly review the line items that are included on a regular basis anyway, and then it doesn't really make sense to do the work to start from scratch each time. So it's really kind of depending on how you work. Do you not really, do you kind of create a budget and then you just use it and you don't really think too much about it and you just kind of track your expenses and you, you just kind of pay them because it's part of your normal process and you're not really like thinking about each item and deciding if those are really needed anymore? Um, if that's the case, then maybe a zero-based budget is good for you because it really kind of starts you from scratch each time and makes you really consider um, each item in the budget and if they're important to you. Um, so, you know, maybe that might be something that works for you, or maybe for you it's better to just roll over what you have and then just kind of adjust items as needed. Another method of budgeting is the percentage method. So if you are not the kind of person that really likes to get into the details of how you're gonna be spending your money, like specifically as far as all the various line items, then maybe you might wanna consider trying the percentage method of budgeting. So when you use the percentage method, you basically allocate money to each spending area based on a percentage of your income. So like one example of how this can be set up is using the 50-30-20 rule. So when you use the 50-30-20 rule, it means that 50% of your income goes to needs. So that would cover things like your mortgage, um, insurance, your cell phone bill, gas, groceries, utilities, all that type of stuff. Then you'd have 30% going towards your wants. So that might be things like dining out, paying for a Netflix subscription, um, vacations, new clothes, any of that type of stuff. And then 20% would go towards savings. So that might be for things like retirement, emergency funds, and any other long-term savings goals you might have. Maybe you need to save for a new car in the future or for a major home improvement. Any of those like major long-term savings type um, items would be covered under that 20%. Now, obviously these, these percentages of 50, 30, 20 rule is just strictly an example. You would need to adjust those percentages based on your actual expenses because say that your needs make up 60% of your income, if you only put 50% aside, obviously that's not gonna work. Um, but it might kind of force you to take a look though and see if maybe your needs are too high of a percentage of your income. Maybe you need to try and see if you could boost your income or maybe see if there's anything you could do to lower that percentage if you feel like you're spending too much of a percentage of income covering your needs, not allowing you to have enough access for savings or to cover some of those wants that you want to include in your budget. Whatever your percentages end up being though, it kind of just gives you a guideline to divide up your money when it comes in so that you know where it should go. And by kind of divvying it up into those buckets, you have a lot more freedom to just spend it how you want to spend it. You don't have to say, um, I have a budget of $50 for dining out this week, or I have a budget of, um, I don't know, some dollar amount for getting your nails done, or I don't know, whatever extra money you might spend, or, or just buying some seasonal decorations at Target or whatever. You don't, you're not going to that level of detail. You're just saying, okay, I have $50 this week to spend on whatever I feel like. So whether you wind up spending it on dining out or something at Target or whatever, you have a little bit more freedom to just kind of spend the money as long as you stay within that percentage. And it, you don't have to track as much because you're not tracking to those certain categories. You're just tracking in general to keep within that dollar amount. And once you've decided how much that dollar amount represents as a percent for this week, you know that's how much free money you have to spend on whatever you choose to spend it on. 
The issue with this type of budgeting is that it can lead to excess spending if you're not careful. So, you know, you do if you do want to have some freedom and that's more your budget style, that's fine. But you want to kind of still um, be a little bit considerate about how you're spending the money um, just to make sure that even though you have that freedom, you're still spending it wisely and on things that are important to you. Another method is called the pay yourself first method. So when you use a pay yourself first method, you're basically um, focusing on putting money aside for savings first. So the purpose of this budget style is to make sure that you get that money into savings before it even goes um, into your um, checking account, I guess, basically, you, is a way you could look at it to, to be available for other spending. So you do first have to create a budget to determine how much you need for bills and other spending um, costs so that you can decide how much can be dedicated to savings. But once you have that amount determined, every time you receive your pay or whatever other income you have coming in, a portion of your income goes immediately to savings, whether you just literally go in and move it or you have it set up as an automatic transfer or however you set that up, the first priority is moving money to savings. So by doing it this way, you ensure that you do not end up spending any excess money on things that are not a priority, priority to you. And by not having that excess money in your account, the money that went over into your savings, you're just gonna be less tempted to spend it on other things, such as maybe eating out or other unplanned purchases. But in order to really be able to um, make this budget method work, you have to make sure that you don't pull that money back out of savings. Because if you put the money into savings and you're like, oh, well, I really wanna you know, get this extra, um, I don't know, go, I, I always just go back to going out to dinner or buying things at Target. Obviously, there's other things that people spend money on. But whatever that excess spending is, you really have to limit yourself to what is left in your bank account of the money that you had determined was available for your wants and that you're not just pulling that money back out of savings to use it on other things. So you really need to be committed to say whatever amount I determined was gonna go to savings is gonna stay there and I'm not just gonna pull it back. But this can definitely be really helpful um, like I said, if you're the type of person that's going to spend everything that's available in your account, by putting it to savings right away, you never see it there in your account and you can kind of get used to not having that money and then just letting your savings accumulate. Another um, tool you can use to managing your money kind of along with your budget is using trying to use the cash envelope method. So for some people, this is really successful. Um, I've honest, uh, honestly never done it myself. I've considered it over time, but I never actually went through the effort of actually doing it. But it definitely can be a good tool to um, consider if you feel like you're having trouble sticking within your spending limits, and it's not kind of because of the fact that maybe you didn't budget enough, or you know just unusual. Um, emergencies are happening, if it's just legitimately that you're not um, kind of being disciplined and sticking within your budget and you feel like you need a little bit more um, of a way to hold your spending in check, you could consider using the cash envelope method along with your budget process. So you still would have to have a budget because you need to know how much you have available to spend in the various categories that you want to use cash for. So you would first establish your budget with one of those other budget methods, but then once you know what you want to use, you would use cash envelopes to kind of control that spending that you can do. So obviously it's not going to be for things like your mortgage payment, property taxes, utilities, or other bills like that that you need to pay um, you know, with a check or electronically, um, but things like gas, clothing, groceries, um, things like that that you want to kind of limit how much you're going to spend each week you would determine those amounts those amounts that you want to spend and then you'd put them in cash envelopes to limit yourself to say okay this is how much money i have to spend and once the cash in that envelope is gone it's gone so as long as you're a disciplined person and you're going to not just go back and take more cash out <laughs> this could be a very good option um, for you if you really find like you're struggling and sticking with your spending limits so 
a lot of people really like that method. It's obviously really popular from um, Dave Ramsey and his daughter, Rachel Cruz. If you've ever listened to any of those, they are really into the cash spending, um, you know, using cash envelopes. Like I said, I have never personally done it, but I know a lot of people do really have a lot of success using that. So that might be an option. Another tool you can use is sinking funds. So again, this is more of a tool to use alongside with your budgeting, regardless of what budgeting style you use, sinking funds can be really helpful because what they do, what a sinking fund is, is a savings where you put money aside for future expenses. And these are not for emergencies. These are for future expenses that you know are coming. They just don't come on a very regular weekly or monthly basis. So it's not something that you're gonna say, okay, every week I'm gonna be paying this bill for $25 or every month I have this bill that's $49.95 or whatever. Um, this is something like an annual insurance premium that comes every January or your Amazon Prime membership. If you have that, that comes whatever on an annual basis. And if you're not including that in your weekly spending budget, when those things hit, especially if they hit all at the same time, you you might not have the money available to cover those. So sinking funds account for those. You put money aside each week so that you have money for those expenses when they come up because you know they're gonna be coming, but if you're doing just like a regular weekly budget, you might not be considering them and you might feel like you have enough money extra built into your budget to cover those things when they happen but something else always seems to happen at the same time and then you wind up coming in over budget, or you might. I know I used to. Before I started using sinking funds, I would always think I had enough money in my budget to cover those items as they came up. And it would never fail. Like something else would wind up coming that week in addition to those, maybe one or two of those, and I would always wind up going over budget. And once I started realizing that and saving money in sinking funds so that I had money set aside out of my regular weekly budget, like I would, I, what I do is I say, okay, my weekly budget, I have this much money to spend per week. And out of that, I have, I don't remember, say $20 that gets set aside for pet expenses, um, $20 that gets set aside for gifts, like for birthday gifts that I'm going to have to buy for friends and family throughout the year those items come out of my regular weekly budget and they get set aside automatically. So by doing that, you have the money set aside separately to pay for those expenses and it doesn't have to come out of your weekly budget at the time that it happens. So you can do this as detailed or as um, minimal as you want. I personally love to do it really detailed just because that's the way I am and I like to know like, okay, I have $35 saved so far towards my Amazon Prime renewal, or I have $60 saved so far for car maintenance or whatever it is. But you don't have to do it that way. You could be as detailed or not as you want. You could do maybe detail for some larger items and then maybe less detailed for others. Or you could just do a big pot where you say, okay, I'm going to need money for gifts and, and oil changes and um, uh, Amazon Prime renewal and my homeowner's insurance and whatever all those different things are just kind of come up with an overall average weekly expense for all of them combined and just start putting money into a sinking fund if you don't want to do it detailed. And then just pull the money of that account as you need it and that will help you stay on budget because you're already taking that money out of your weekly spending and not assuming that it can be available to spend on other things and then not having it when the time comes for these irregular type expenses. So for me personally, that has been probably my number one most important tool that has helped me stay on budget generally. Of course, we still go over budgets. Things still happen. But from those constant budget variances, that has helped me so much. And it feels so good to have the money put aside. Like when that insurance bill comes and I'm like, oh, okay, here it is. I have the money set aside for that already. Or when I have to bring my dogs to the vet, for their shots or whatever each year. Oh my gosh, the 700 whatever dollars it winds up being to get both dogs shots and all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, the amount is not wonderful, but here it is, it's set aside already. I don't have to worry about it. So it's, that's something that's been really, really helpful to me. And then one other um, 
budgeting method that could be considered for someone that has really minimal expenses is just a very simple um, spreadsheet or um, notepad or however you like to keep track of things. Um, I use a spreadsheet with my son. Um, this is for if you have a budget with very minimal expenses, very minimal categories that you're tracking, um, maybe like a, a teen or a young adult, um, just to kind of help them get set up with a very simple budget. So what I did with my son is when he started, um, he was going to college. Um, he's actually doing trade school now, but at first he was going to college and he was helping pay towards his education. So what we did is we sat down and we set up a spreadsheet that basically mimicked the balance in his checking account. And it had a starting balance and then it had a column for each um, spending category that he had. So it was basically like um, gas, insurance, cell phone, personal spending, you know, like if he wanted to save up a little bit for himself or get a snack or a drink while he was on the road or whatever. And then the balance went in to the college column. So every time he got a paycheck, he would put the dollar amount in so it would add to his balance. But then each of the, of the paycheck, um, the amount that was allocated for gas, insurance, whatever, per each pay period would go into that column. So it would basically show his checking account balance with the new money that came in for his income. And then down at the bottom of each column, it would show of that total checking balance, how much of it was available for gas, how much was available for insurance, how much was available for his cell phone bill, for personal, whatever, and then the balance went to the college column. So at any given time, he would know of the balance in his checking account, how much he had available to spend in those various categories. So just something very simple like that was really helpful to him and it kept his spending um, in line. He knew how much money he had saved up if he wanted to buy a new video game or whatever the spending was that he wanted to, wanted to do. And it was um, kind of helpful because sometimes, especially with um, younger um, teens or like adults, uh, young adults, sorry, I mean, um, if you see like, oh wow, I have like a thousand dollars in my checking account, I could spend on anything I want. But if you know that, um, you know, well, $750 of that is set aside for the next college bill that comes and I need this $40 towards the next time I get gas or whatever, it can kind of just help them understand that money and where it needs to go. So that was really helpful to him and he did record his expenses in the same way. So like each time he had an expense that would go on another line item and it would subtract out of the column for that expense. So if he got gas, it would subtract out of the gas column um, when he um, he's on our insurance and then he would give me the amount towards his insurance every month or whatever it was, he would minus that out of the insurance column. So at any given time, each time he had an expense, he would know exactly how much um, money he had left available in the various categories. So that might be an option um, if you have someone with very minimal expenses that really just kind of wants to keep track of their money and make sure they're setting enough aside for expenses as they come up and they kind of know like of the money that they have, um, what it's kind of to be used for. So that's pretty much what I have to say about budgeting styles and different ways to kind of help keep track of your money. Um, the right way to do your budget is the way that works for you. So some people really love getting into the details and tracking expenses and others just want to know how much is left that they can spend. So there's really no answer to the best way to budget, but you just wanna try and find some method of budgeting that you know you'll stick to because having um, a budget that will keep up um, with your lifestyle and that you know you'll keep up with it and something that will help you manage your money, it will just make your life a lot less stressful because you're gonna really lessen that likelihood of wondering, where the heck did all my money go? If you know where your money's going and you know how much you have available to spend, it just takes away that part of stress of your life or at least limits it. So again, budgeting is just a method of managing your money. So even if you need to pull pieces from all the different budgeting methods and kind of make your own that works for you, go ahead and create your own budget style. It's just really all about making sure you're able to get the most out of the money you have available to you. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and it motivates you to 
take better control of your money or find something better that works for you as far as your budgeting process. So thank you so much for listening and I will see you back here again next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode and don't forget you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife and you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.